episode of Enabling the Disabled. Today, we are in conversation with Dr. Chona about what disability is and the factor it entails. So let's begin. Uh, in recent studies, it's been proven that environment tends to serve the norms. Um, however, the norms are made for what an average able human is. And hence, what is your opinion on the fact that the environment should also be made to serve a larger spectrum of ability and disability? This is absolutely astounding. A new way of looking at the norms which have survived for centuries without keeping in mind the needs of each and every person in the society. Today it's estimated that more than 10% of the entire human population has one disability or the other and the regular norms uh, of uh, environment do not suit them. So what have we done so far to be able to make it lovely, beautiful, enjoyable and possible for the disabled to be a part of the main society. We need an environment as defined by Pratna, which is um, friendly, which is to say there is uh, mobility, we need more um, lifts, we need more um, um, kinds of uh, places where uh, these individuals can um, participate whether these are the parks or they're the institutions or uh, they need uh, proper ramps. Uh, there is also for those who are blind and for those who cannot hear properly, we need to know the language. Unfortunately, at this moment, uh, one realizes when one is dealing with the hundreds and thousands of the special kids that they are not in the comfort zone. I agree with you, Prasna, and the government is trying, but it requires a whole lot of uh, new attitude. It requires a whole lot of investment and it requires a whole lot of uh, understanding that, that there is that population whose hand we need to hold so that they can be with us as part of our lives multitude of norms, especially towards disabilities like autism and ADHD, were built towards serving and when the tests were done, were built towards serving the male gender. And hence, today, it is much harder to diagnose someone who is female with autism and get diagnosed when an adolescent as well. As well. But someone who is a male is diagnosed at the age of, for example, two or three. ADHD gets much more complex in this very scenario. Um, people who are not a part of the gender binary, um, it gets further harder for them. What do you have to say? Uh, it is true that uh, now we have to not just think about disability as a, you know a common factor. We have to think about the environment needs of uh, those who are males and those who are females. Yes, it is true that so far the concentration has been on the male population. My one big worry and I feel sorry about it is the protection of the female disabled. Whatever may be their um, you know, uh, disability, uh, it is always a great fear in the minds of the parents whether these uh, female disabled can be sent to the schools, uh, special schools, can, uh, is the transport, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, sort of safe for them and even when they are in the house, it is so important uh, to keep and make sure that uh, if they cannot look after their own security that they have to make arrangements. So therefore, as you, your first question was about environment, 
now security has taken a very very big uh, uh, you know place in environment and i do know of uh, families where they have cameras in the rooms where they have female disabled or their daughters and surely they can be uh, confident when they are away from home that they are been uh, you know they are safe and uh, they are happy and uh, so on um i have a question about privacy and um how it has been seen that people who have disability their rights to make decisions their rights to hold opinions and their right to privacy is often taken away as a means to serve them but um that, isn't that a uh, attack on their very human right to privacy and you know self care keeping a tab on the individual is from the point of view of uh, protection in the house by other females yet to ensure that the child or the individual has had his meal and he has been given water or there was medicine to be given if the medicine has been given on time and so it will not actually um, you know infringe on the privacy of that individual um, there has to be always a worry in the mind of the parents whether the child uh, or the individual is um, you know uh, not hungry or is hungry or you know thirsty or medicine has been given or not so that kind of a general information that the parent will possess will give him some kind of a satisfaction initially autism was associated with the color blue and to a large extent it still is that happened because autism was a boys disorder because the initial norms and initial diagnosis were created for boys and to say that girls can not have autism and obviously the stereotypical color association to gender now uh, the autistic community as a whole irrespective of gender is reclaiming their color as red um i think this happens because a lot of the conversations about people with disabilities isn't like people with disabilities aren't included in them what do you have to say about that it is true that autism today has suddenly become uh, uh, very well known because there has been a lot of push to understand autism films are being made more and more people are um, you know getting into jobs and so on but why should we at all have any kind of color either for the disabled or for the autistic blue red green or anything i think they should be part of humanity when we are talking about um, you know night and day about inclusion about integration then where is the question of defining them by colors uh it's not a country where you have a flag and you don't have to carry a color to be what you are it's not at all necessary so um for me i find the autistic uh closer to normalcy they don't need a color it is true that the incidence of autism among the boys is much higher than among the girls it is 1 in 40 in girls but it is much greater in uh, boys so whether it is blue or it is pink these days even when babies are born people get very angry if the girls born are given um, you know pink they would like to be celebrated as boys therefore while we are thinking about integrating the disabled in the society similarly let us not further divide disability into various kinds of um, you know issues uh, we have to look at people with a difference we have to look, look at people with special abilities uh, i don't even like to call them differently able i would would like to call them enabled in fact are very um, this channel is called enabling the disabled there should be no such word as disability 
we are all enabled some in some ways and the others in other ways it is upon us to find the talent and press down what may not be there like i have seen my own daughter grow i mean we just forgot i mean now when people meet her uh, they find her far more charming far more enchanting far more funnier warm loving uh, she's got sense so if we had started looking at her differently she would have been a different person and i'm going to talk about using description factors to uh, describe people who might not have been diagnosed with the disability uh, like or might just have a few traits that we associate with disability for example if someone's a perfectionist we might go like oh this is uh, ocd or if someone has Uh, an emotionally stereotypical response which is learned they might not have autism but we might you know associate their emotional response with autism what do you have to say then i fully agree with you that we should not be labeling uh, you know individuals and uh, applying our knowledge to their uh, behavior uh, but one factor is uh, pretty uh certain in my mind which i've experienced uh, for the last uh, 40 50 years to be exact 52 years that uh, there may be some trait in nearly every individual which is uh, a reminder of a specific kind of a disability you know some someone may be hyperkinetic or some someone may not have memory a good memory or someone may ha- have uh, you know uh, uh, a trait of repeating the same thing again and again now i am not going to call them any of them uh, you know either autistic or uh, hyperkinetic <coughs> or whatever so i fully agree with you that i am looking for a world in years to come where all of us as we look different we um, way differently our heights are different so are individuals with a difference and we should accept each other without calling them because we will understand that they need help but we don't have to really call them disabled um i think my next question will be the hierarchy that is formed between people who are typical and who have a sense of neurodivergence because people who are typical or do not have a disability some have a sense of privilege have access to situation and to people who people with neurodivergence might not have what is your opinion on that mm. those who are used to being what we call normal in uh, you know uh, simple language uh, they have much greater opportunities and uh, they are uh, surely at a position which is more pivotal and those who are lag behind are the ones who do not have the opportunities and that's my job my job is to create more opportunities my job is to get more people into the fold to be understanding the situation creating the awareness that no no i mean No. these are these individuals are not the children of the uh, dusk they are in some ways even brighter in fact my association has made me feel make, has made me a better person because there is so much of purity there is so much of uh, uh, you know kindness there's so much of love that you can receive from them they are not judgmental so it's high time that mankind started looking at them as um, you know people uh, with a special gift and those gifts are the kinds that we work all our lives through spiritual leaders and prayers and going to the temple and uh, their uh, uh, you know uh, smile is real their uh, uh, fondness for you is not pretentious actually they are the ones who should be right at the top and i'm really looking forward to a day when anyone who's autistic has the position in the parliament 
or any kind of disability where he or she can communicate and make the world understand that look we are here and we are no lesser than you and we are not the children of the lesser god